So NAB 2018 this year in Las Vegas. Lots of different companies there. I was there for a couple days, talked to a number of companies, picked up a few things. And today I'm going to talk to you about a new filter line that Polar Pro is coming out with, the Quartz Line Filters. Let's take a look. Today, I'm talking about Polar Pro's Quartz Line Filters. You know Polar Pro is the company that's provided drone accessories, drone cases, largely GoPro and drone focused filters. Well, they're trying to move more into still photography, videography, cinematography, and they're introducing their Quartz Line Cinema Series filters. Today, I have Polar Pro's Quartz Line 77 millimeter ND1000 polarized lens. It's a circular polarizer, so you can turn it for polarization effect, reduced layer, increase saturation and colors, whatnot. And it's a 10 stop ND filter, meaning it's going to change your exposure time by 1000 times. So if you had a setting where you needed a thousandth of a second for an exposure without this filter on, with this filter on, it would be one second. Largely, really quick, these filters are used for, I would say for 90% of people out there that use them, they use them for landscape purposes. So you're out, you're shooting a stream, a river, an ocean, clouds, a cityscape with clouds or a bay. You would use this so that you can get a very long shutter time to either smooth things out or create some long trails. So in the case of clouds or something like that, you could have a skyline like the skyline of Boston with some clouds in the bay in front of it and you would get all of that smoothed out. All the boats that are going back and forth would largely disappear because they're not there long enough to be caught up. You get some great streaks from clouds. You can do some amazing things with these. These are one of my most important filters in my arsenal for landscape photography. So let's open this up and I'll tell you a little bit about it. So Polar Pro describes these as having a fused quartz glass. So they're 99.9% .9 pure quartz element. Um, they said that they have a refractive index of 1.46. I can't really tell you what that means. Brass frame, so good construction on them. Um, single element NDPL glass. Optical ND coatings that they say are hyper neutral, so they shouldn't create any color cast. When using really a filter of any kind, which you don't want, unless it's a color type filter that you're trying to get colorization out of, is you want it to be neutral. You don't want them to affect the color that's going through them in any way. You want them to apply an effect and have that effect be color neutral. So if you have a particular value of a color coming in, you want that same value going out, just maybe attenuated. So in this case, you know, it's brought down in intensity, but the color's still the same. So in the box, you have a card that describes their app that you can go get. The app's pretty cool. It's got a ND calc in it, along with some other pieces. Pretty complete app. There's a lot of ND calculator apps out there. This one's free. This will help you choose the right filter, whether it's for your drone or for whatever. I've tried it out. Really nice, well-built app. You have a pouch here. This pouch is cool. It's got a little uh, lens cloth built into the pouch. So that's always nice. If you wear glasses like I do, I'm always looking for these. Or if you've got a lens or you need to clean your filter or whatever. Also comes with the filter cloth and then the hard plastic case for the filter itself. The filter is, this one is a 10 stop brass ring around here, really nice knurled ring and uh, so that you can really grip onto it. The one thing that I like, and I've had issues in the past, are that this, um, the inner ring has pretty deep knurls in it. Sometimes you'll get these onto your lens, you'll get them on there pretty tight, either through being on for a while or um, accidentally tightening it down when you're spinning it. They can be really hard to get off. This one has really deep knurls, and if you had any issues getting it off, I'm sure that you could just grab a rubber band, put it around there, and get it right off. So good construction there. Overall, I mean, it looks solid. This is not a review. This is just an overview. I will do an in-depth, real-world test with this, right? Take it out, shoot with it, show you the images straight out of the camera before they're retouched and then after they are, so we can see any color cast or any maybe optical issues. I don't expect there to be any. Polar Pro's pretty much got their filter science down, but um, as you can see, it's pretty much like a black hole here. So a couple things to keep in mind when you're shooting with these. One, setting up your shot. I pretty much have like a three-step process that I go through when I'm using a 10 or 15 stop ND filter. So I'm going to get my composition, I'm going to get my aperture, and then from there I'm going to get the correct exposure without a filter. So let's just say that I'm at ISO 100, F8, and a 125th or a 200th of a second. Now when I put this on, it's going to be a thousand times slower. So 200 times slower would be one second. So a 200th of a second exposure, properly exposed without the filter on becomes a five second exposure. So if I have running water, 
Now you're not going to really see the running water. You're going to see it smoothed out. You're going to get nice streaks. And depending on how much you want, you either want a really long exposure that'll completely flatten out waves, everything else, or make some really long streaks in clouds. Or maybe you want a little bit of motion still. You might want a one second exposure, or you might want a three quarter or a two second exposure. So this will help you get there. If this is too much, you can always go down to a five stop or a three stop or an eight stop or whatnot. Um, overall, really good construction. It has internal threads here. So you can still thread something else onto it if you want a UV or something like that. Um, pretty thin frame, so I would expect little vignetting, if um, if any. Depends really on how wide your lens is. But um, this fit my 7200 perfectly, along with my 24105 and my 2470. I have the original one, not the Mark II that's 82 millimeters. They do make a number of step-down rings for this filter. So my recommendation when buying a filter like this, because it is expensive, this one's I think $239 is to um, buy the largest one that you're going to need. So in my case, I would buy an 82 and then get step-down rings. So I can get an 82 to a 77 step-down ring or to a 67 or to a 55. So that way I've got one filter kind of covering all of that in a series of step-down rings. I don't have to buy a bunch of different ones of these. I just need to buy one for each one that I want, buy the largest size possible that I could use or that I can afford, and then um, use a series of step-down rings to adapt them to different lenses. So I expect that this will do well. Um, I don't have any real world images with it now. The images that I showed earlier were my images, but they were taken a year or two ago with a completely different filter. These, I think, are available on May 15th. I just saw them in NAB. Full disclosure, Polar Pro provided me with this filter, but they're not paying me. They're not sponsoring this video at all. Uh, nothing like that. So I'm not getting anything. There's links below. They're not affiliate links. I won't get anything if you go there and buy anything. Um, I try not to mess around with affiliate links so that, you know, if you go to a link, it's just a link. You can buy from wherever you want. I have a link below to Polar Pro as well as a quick description. Like I said, really quick overview on these. They look great. I want to get them out, shoot with them before I give you my verdict, but um, I have a pretty good confidence that they're going to have a good filter. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching today. Stay tuned. I've got a bunch more stuff coming up from NAB and other stuff. Get outside, go make something. And I'll talk to you soon.